What's up beautiful people, it's Sindarima, welcome to the channel. Today we'll have this very interesting video. And it's titled, I'm a time traveler from the year 2345. I'm so sorry for what's coming. Hmm. Awesome, I'm excited to check this one regarding this time traveler because I've seen a couple of videos regarding time travelers and everything. And I really want to know what they've got to say on this one. Let's check it out. Is time traveling possible? The question of whether time travel is feasible has been around ever since the publication of H.G. Wells' novel, The Time Machine. Hmm. The novel tells the story of a Victorian inventor who travels back in time to the year 802 AD. Some people believe that time travel is possible in the future, while others dismiss such ideas as science fiction. Hmm. The late Stephen Hawking entertained the hope that humans would develop time travel technology one day. Meanwhile, there are many who argue that time travel experiences have already occurred. In one instance, a man claimed to have visited the year 2345 and gave some ominous predictions about what lay ahead. Could one even travel back in time? Hmm. Who is this mysterious timeline slider that jumps in time? What happens to time traveling paradoxes? Let's explore the tale of the time-traveling man and his dire prophecies of what is coming for us all. As a kid, Albilek stood out as peculiar. He entered the world in 1927 and he was incredibly smart. His amazing memory and comprehension earned him the moniker Walking Encyclopedia since he could recall information verbatim from what he had recently read. Wow. At nine months old, he claims to have overheard a conversation and fully comprehended what was being said. Before watching the 1984 film The Philadelphia Experiment, Al led a very typical existence. He missed the movie when it first came out. The year 1988 was the year he finally caught the film. During World War II, the film's protagonists, a band of sailors, were on the deck of the USS Eldridge and believed they had found a way for the US Navy to conceal its vessels. In the film, the ship's crew mysteriously vanished and was transported through time. Hmm. Al felt a peculiar sense of recognition after watching the film. He experimented with various New Age treatments after feeling like he was repressing something and several previously forgotten memories resurfaced. After recalling his past life, Al learned that his real name was Edward Cameron and that he was born in 1916. The folks he called parents were actually legal guardians the state had appointed for him. Duncan, his biological brother, had been hidden from him ever since he buried his past. He claims that as his memories returned, he learned he had participated in the infamous Philadelphia experiment. According to him, the project began in 1931, and he and his brother joined up to work on it during World War II. Hmm? He claims that he and his brother witnessed the 1943 experiments firsthand. According to Al, a team of experts was attempting to conceal American vessels from Nazi U-boats. Three of them were named John, Hutchinson, von Neumann, and Tesla. After having some success in 1940 with hiding smaller vessels, they set their sights on the USS Eldridge three years later. Al claims that on July 22nd, a major issue arose. He claims the ship vanished, but that after only 15 minutes, the passengers were delirious and feeling sick. The Navy ordered that testing begin in just a month, despite John von Neumann's pleas for more time. Al and his sibling had returned to the ship. When the ship reappeared, Al and his brother weren't on it. Something was wrong, and the two brothers jumped ship. When they finally reached land, it was neither 1943 nor Philadelphia. Montauk, New York, was their location, and the year was 1983. Al claims that they were surrounded by guards and helicopters when they finally reached land. Hmm. John von Neumann, who had aged 40 years, was waiting for them in a secret facility below ground. According to Al, he and Duncan went back in time. The Eldritch was trapped in a hyperspace bubble, as John von Neumann had previously explained. Its continuous expansion poses an existential threat to planet Earth. The only way to stop it, he told the soldiers, was to go back to the ship and destroy the machinery there, and he needed Al and Duncan to help him. The men traveled back in time and destroyed the ship's generators with axes. Time began to mend the rips in it and return to normal. The Eldritch took a trip back in time to 1943. Al blacked out after he destroyed the generator. When he woke up, he and his brother were in the hospital. 
It was in 1943 or 1983. According to him, the year was 2137. While traveling through time, Al says that he and Duncan suffered from radiation burns and were being treated. <laughs> For six weeks, they lived and worked in the hospital of the future. No bandages or antibiotic creams were being applied by the medics. Patients were instead treated with cutting-edge light and vibration energy. All that was shown on TV were old stations, maps, and historical documentaries. He claims that comedies and soap operas did not exist at the time. He found out about the shifts in American geography via watching TV. He claims that the United States lost substantial territory between the years 2000 and 2025. Florida was no more, and in its place was the city of Atlanta. According to Al, the United States ceased to exist as a sovereign nation, and the world was ruled by a military dictatorship. There were just 300 million people on Earth, down from a previous estimate of 7.7 .7 billion. He blamed nuclear weapons as the root of the problem. Al claims that after being healed, he attempted to return to his own time but instead found himself in the year 2749. By this point in time, the world has been ravaged by nuclear war, but humanity has rebuilt into a utopia. According to Al, the problems of money and employment had been eliminated since humanity had figured out how to make anti-gravity machines and because robots had replaced humans in the workforce. There was peace because there was no need to wage war. Al was suddenly transported back to 1983, but his brother experienced unwanted side effects. His death came at a young age. Al requested that his parents conceive a second child so that he could inherit Duncan's memories and ideas. Then, they sent Al back using Duncan's telepathic powers. After his memories were wiped, he was returned to 1927 under hey. an assumed name. What's the deal? Is this fiction or real? Many real. conspiracy theorists believe Al, but others don't. He insists that he did travel in time. If his tales are genuine, we won't know for sure for another two years. According to Al, by 2025, Florida was gone. We'll know in a little over two years whether or not he was correct. Meanwhile, we should ponder this important question. Can we actually travel through time? Hmm. The short answer is yes, and you're doing it now, speeding through time at the incredible rate of one second each second. Time passes at the same rate whether you're watching paint dry or wishing you had more time to catch up with a faraway friend. However, the time travel depicted in popular science fiction shows like Doctor Who, Star Trek, and Back to the Future, in which the main characters board a wacky vehicle and speed off into the past or spin into the future, is not the same as the kind depicted here. Time travel stories interact with the concept of parallel universes or alternate timelines when the protagonist must deal with the consequences of altering the past or present based on information from the future. Most fictional time travelers simply enter a time machine and vanish. Afterward, they magically resurface in the midst of a band of cowboys, knights, or even dinosaurs. These movies depict what amounts to time travel. While scientists don't consider time travel to be plausible in the real world, they also don't dismiss the idea out of hand. It's possible that jumping around in time is allowed by physics, but the subtleties are what matter. No one has ever demonstrated the kind of time travel seen in science fiction where one can go back and forth in time or proposed a method of sending a person through significant periods of time without destroying them on the way. Stephen Hawking wrote in Black Holes and Baby Universes that the best evidence we have that time travel is not possible and never will be is that we have not been invaded by hordes of tourists from the future. However, time travel manipulation is supported by science to a certain extent. For instance, Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity postulates that time is relative to the perspective of the observer. A person moving at close to the speed of light will age and become bored far more slowly than a person standing still. Hmm. Because of this, astronaut Scott Kelly aged marginally slower during his year in space than his identical twin brother did while remaining on Earth. Some of the strangest physics associated with time travel can be found in ideas involving wormholes, black holes, and string theory. A wide variety of science fiction media, including novels, films, television shows, comics, video games, and more, continue to explore time travel. In 1905, Einstein created his special relativity theory. One of the cornerstones of contemporary physics, it was later expanded upon by Einstein in his theory of general relativity. 
The space-time continuum is described by special relativity for objects traveling at constant speeds along a straight line. The theory's abridged explanation sounds easier than it is. First, there is no absolute frame of reference because everything is measured with respect to something else. Light always travels at the same speed, which brings us to our second point. It is unaffected by changes in context or measurement technique. And finally, the speed of light is the absolute limit. Time travel as we know it emerges naturally from these fundamental principles. A fast-moving observer will perceive time to pass more slowly than a stationary observer. Humans are not accelerated to near light speed, but they are sent whizzing around the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour on the International Space Station. Scott Kelly, an astronaut, followed in the footsteps of his identical twin and fellow astronaut Mark Kelly. Wow. Scott Kelly was in space for 520 days, but mm? Mark only spent 54 days there. The age gap between the two men has been increased due to the disparity in the rate at which they have experienced time throughout their lives. Wow. Dilation of time between people on Earth and GPS satellites in flight does make a difference, even if the difference in an astronaut's lifespan is negligible, more suitable for jokes between siblings than actual life extension or visiting the distant future. Hmm. Time seems to slow down the faster you move. In addition, Einstein's general theory of relativity states that the stronger the local gravity, the slower the passage of time. Hmm. According to Drexel University cosmologist Dave Goldberg, near massive bodies, near the surface of neutron stars, or even at the surface of the Earth, although it's a tiny effect, time runs slower than it does far away. A Goldberg claims that if one were to linger around near the edge of a black hole, where the gravity is enormous, one may experience only a few hours while an Earthling would experience 1,000 years. Hmm. A trip back to Earth from near a black hole would be like taking a trip into the future for the person. However, time travel backward becomes difficult, much more so than being torn to shreds within a black hole. For decades, scientists have been aware of the paradoxes associated with time travel using the theory of general relativity, and they have proposed a few viable solutions. According to Fabio Costa, a theoretical physicist at the Nordic Institute of Theoretical Physics, the first attempt to solve the problem using time travel was in the 1920s. An enormous cylinder would twist space-time as it rotated rapidly, like rolling a piece of straw between your palms. It wasn't until the 1970s that scientists realized this contraption may function as a time machine to go to the past, thanks to their discovery of a phenomenon known as closed time-like curves. Wow. A closed time-like curve is a hypothetical observer's path who, from their own vantage point, is constantly moving forward in time but who, at some point, returns to the point in time and space where they began. This is feasible in a space-time loop when gravity has twisted space-time and caused it to fold back on itself. Despite this, the phenomenon inspired further investigation. The topic of time travel was given more serious attention by scientists beginning in the 1980s. Igor Novikov of Russia and Kip Thorne of the United States, for example, wrote a paper together in 1990 on closed time-like curves. They started looking into the mechanics of time travel and how one might go about attempting to construct one. But they also looked into the issues inherent in time travel, which is no less essential. What if, for example, you threw a billiard ball into a time machine and it went to the past, collided with its former self, and then returned to the present in such a way that its current self could never enter the time machine. That seems like a paradox there. Hmm. There has been intermittent interest in the subject since the 1990s, but no significant progress has been made. Every single time machine model that has been developed has flaws, which is why the area isn't very active right now. Wow. It has some appealing qualities and perhaps some potential, but there is a stumbling block that becomes apparent once one begins to untangle the intricacies. As an example, Albert Einstein's discovery that mass and energy are interchangeable reveals that most time travel theories necessitate negative mass and thus oh. negative energy. Like electric charge, mass can be positive or negative in theory. However, no such thing has ever been observed in practice. What's the deal with using rare elements to travel across time? To keep a wormhole, the projected space-time tunnel between two distant locations in the cosmos, open, this is often necessary. This tunnel would collapse under the weight of gravity if negative mass weren't there. You can think of it as opposing the wormhole-bound positive mass or energy. While both Kana and Goldberg agree that it's highly improbable that negative mass matter exists, Kana does point out that some quantum phenomena, 
such as negative energy on extremely small scales, offer promise. A realistic time machine, he argues, would require something far larger in scale. Hmm. Some scientists have proposed theories for time travel that incorporate a wormhole or a cosmic tube connecting two distant locations. It's like a fast track to the stars. Picture sending the opposite end of the wormhole back to its origin at a speed close to that of light. There is a disconnection between those two halves. Both take place at different times and places. Time travel occurs when you traverse the space between them. Moving one end of the wormhole near a massive gravitational field like a black hole while maintaining the other end near a weaker gravitational force would achieve a similar effect. A particle or other mass component may theoretically exist in the past with respect to the other side of the wormhole if time slowed down on the high gravity side. Creating a wormhole, however, is complicated by the need for negative mass and energy. A wormhole made from regular matter would quickly disintegrate under the force of gravity. Similar problems crop up in many other designs. Like a calorie-free pizza, they exist only in theory because there is no practical method to produce them. Perhaps, as the late physicist Stephen Hawking said, the issue is not simply that we don't know how to create time travel machines, but also that doing so is impossible until on minuscule scales. In a paper published in Physical Review D in 1992, Hawking speculated that it seems there is a chronology protection agency which prevents the appearance of closed time-like curves and so makes the universe safe for historians. Part of his argument was based on the contradictions that would arise from time travel, such as the billiard ball paradox and the more well-known grandfather paradox, in which if you kill your grandfather before he has children, you cannot be born and therefore cannot time travel and therefore cannot have killed your grandfather. Hmm. You still exist, though. Augustin Rayo, a philosopher at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, is interested in these complexities because they raise questions about more than merely causation and chronology. Additionally, they cast doubt on the reliability of one's own free will. If physics says you can go back in time, then why can't you kill your grandfather? What stops you? He says. Are you not free? However, Rayo has a sneaking suspicion that time travel is compatible with free will. What's past is past, he says. So if in fact my grandfather survived long enough to have children, traveling back in time isn't going to change that. Hmm. Why will I fail if I try? I don't know because I don't have enough information about the past. What I do know is that I'll fail somehow. If you went to kill your grandfather, in other words, you'd perhaps slip on a banana en route or miss the bus. You wouldn't be able to complete the task for totally ordinary reasons. The future of traveling across time is uncertain, and no one from the future has shown up to inform us about it, except for Albilek, from whom we have yet to get confirmation of his story. Do you think we have people from the past or future present amongst us? Thanks for watching. Time travel. I know I've come across movies and books talking about time travel but do i believe time travel exists i don't think so i mean lots of stories and scientists coming with notion to say people can try and travel to the past to the future and the likes and all of those i don't believe it no matter what anybody says i don't believe it now the, talking about this person that um traveled to the future saying florida wouldn't exist by 2025 now that is scary do i believe that is a two-way thing but i mean we've got two more years to 2025 and talking about the u.s the future of u.s see listen sometimes this can be just mere speculation sometimes this might be true or not based on what is going on now right now but would I say th these aren't true in any form? I wouldn't say that because sometimes some people, when they see these things or when these things are being presented to them, then other people would work to making these come to reality and the likes and all of that. Uh, it's crazy. One don't even know what to believe anymore, but I still believe that um, America will stay stand strong and America would still exist in the future it will still exist regardless of what anybody is saying and for florida i w i don't know and i mean i haven't actually met any time traveler myself nor do i know any 
um, time traveler it's just fictional stories and movies and all of that let's see what the future holds but let me know what your thoughts are in the comment down below have you ever at any point come across any time traveler or do you think time traveler exists or live in this present day and also what are your thoughts about the future of america and florida and everything or is there any part of this information that was shared here that you've heard before or you most likely believe is is true or should be true i really love your contribution to that you can share other useful information you think might be really helpful and until next time see you in the next video